Alright, this is the Kalamazoo KC812W bandsaw, and this is how you're going to replace the bandsaw blade. So you're going to see two hinges here, hinged plates, and you're going to unscrew both of these. But make sure that your power's off, and ideally you have the extension cord power here unplugged. So unplug that so that there's no power, there's no chance of this bandsaw turning on while you're replacing the blade. So after you unscrew these uh, nice hand knobs, you can open that and you'll see the innards of the bandsaw. It's essentially the two pulleys at the side that are going to hold this bandsaw in place by tension. They're going to be moving like away and putting tension like that. And how you adjust that tension is here with this knob. So if you turn this knob facing this direction clockwise, you increase the tension by moving this pulley farther this way, and then if you turn it counterclockwise, as you can see, if you view from this side, you'll see the effect of turning it clockwise and then counterclockwise. As you can see, the pulley is moving horizontally based on what direction you turn this knob at the side. And once you've turned this knob pretty far counterclockwise so as to move the pulley in that direction, inward so that these two pulleys are closer together, that means that the tension on the bandsaw blade is much, much less, even to zero. Now we have zero tension on the bandsaw blade. You can begin by trying to just seeing that there is a flange, or also called a lip, on this pulley. So you want to take the bandsaw and kind of get it over that lip, and then you'll see it come up. Make sure that you're well prepared and during this procedure for any kind of jumps that the bandsaw blade might do, otherwise that will be an injury, so that's a safety hazard. So just carefully remove it from the top lip here and you'll have the bandsaw blade looking like this. Then you also want to be removed from the bottom piece, but before you do that, you want to take a pair of pliers. This is a slip joint pair of pliers. And there are two screws here, one here attached to, that's going to be mounting this little protection piece and the, uh, on the other side there is another protection piece here and you just want to use the pliers, turn from viewing this way, turn that screw counterclockwise and then you'll be able to loosen it up and hence remove this out of the way for you to take off the band so Do the exact same thing here, turn it counterclockwise, turn the screw and then just remove that piece uh, or just turn it up. And now you have the bottom portion of the bandsaw blade ready for removal. How you do that first is you see how this bandsaw is mounted on uh, near the cutting part by this little block of steel or aluminum and then there are ball bearings here or rather slider bearings, sorry. And then there's another pair of slider bearings here and then another lubrication aiding uh, guide here. So that in mind, you probably want to take off the this right one first because it is closer to the uh, pulley and you don't have as much give as this one which as you can see is further away. So this one is the more difficult one to take off. So let's do that one first. So making sure that you have the top part is not under too much tension so that when you remove the bottom part the top doesn't spring up. But you just kind of want to press down on this blade so that you push it down, which is the only way it can go relative to its little grip in the bearings and you'll be able to bend this bent, you'll be able to re remove this bent up blade although there will be a lot of tension. If there's a lot of tension on this or you need to remove these uh, little pillar, uh, supporting pillars then you can unscrew these knobs and then move this accordingly. And in fact, you can also do that for this too, giving us more space, as you can see. And, if you, and remember to raise up the bandsaw before you do this, such that you're not stuck with trying to remove it with the bandsaw blade close to this bottom plate. And now we've moved this uh, support pillar further away, giving us more room to remove the bandsaw blade. We can do that much more easy. As you can see, it's coming off, off the bearing. And now we kind of combine that with this. Also, it's important to get this bandsaw blade off this bottom lip. As you can, for this one, it's going to be a bit tougher, but having the, the bandsaw blade off the pulley entirely is very important. It makes the process a lot easier. Oh, we got it off the fir first bearing, and we got it off the second one, and we're good. So, 
we got the bandsaw blade off. Now, the replacement bandsaw blade and the shipping after you open the box is probably going to consist of something like this. As you can see, it's just a bandsaw blade with the protective plastic over its uh, sharp teeth to protect you from any scratches while you're unshipping your package and carrying the bandsaw blade. And then the bandsaw blade is uh, held together with a twist tie after being coiled up because this is pretty thin metal. And Make sure that when you're installing the bandsaw blade, you simulate how you're going to install it first. You have to understand what direction that the bandsaw blade uh, moves in, in terms of what rotation the motor is going to apply on your bandsaw. And then, when the band, after you understand what direction that the bandsaw blade is moving in, or rather, simulator right now. Right now, it's even without the bandsaw being there, this pulley being exposed for us to view is pretty dangerous, so you still want to be very careful with this procedure. Let's put this bandsaw blade on the table. When you put the bandsaw blade with the exposed blades anywhere, make sure that you put the flat side, the side without the teeth, on the table. And then we can plug in the power back here. And then turn it on. How the bandsaw blade here works is you have this safety knob where you have to reset this stop switch by turning it clockwise and then it'll automatically extend up from its uh, neutral position. If you want the bandsaw blade to stop, you just press that and it'll remain there until you turn it clockwise and reset that again. And now we can see that, now you can see what direction that this pulley moves in originally. And we can do that by pressing start. But before you do that, make sure that this bandsaw blade is in the zero position. This bandsaw comes with the hydraulic stop or uh, that you can adjust its rate of uh, lowering by. And just make sure that that is at zero, so there's going to be no moving surprises when you turn on the pulley, and surprises lead to accidents. So, saw blade start, we're going to see what direction that pulley moves in. And in fact, th the direction that pulley moves in is going to be the same direction that this pulley moves in when the bandsaw blade is installed, because this should be a free rotating pulley approximately, as you can see. That pulley is attached to the, well that pulley is, uh, connected to the rotation of the uh, uh, AC motor through a pulley of its own back there in the case. So let's do that now. Okay, that's an inverter going off, but we saw what direction that pulley was moving in. It was turning counterclockwise, hence if we install the blade, then the blade here would be moving like this, right? And that means that the, that the movement here would be this way. So to the right. And given that, we have to understand that when we install the blade, we want the flat edge of the blade to be against the upper lip here. And hence, we view it like that, where the flat side of the bandsaw blade is going to be against this top edge, like so. And then, if we also simulate how we're going to bend it into that place, it's going to be bending like this, right? And then you can see, how it's going to cut. It's going to cut with the sharp point. As you can see, the, all these bandsaw blade teeth are pointing in this direction. And hence, that's the direction you want this bandsaw blade to move in, where the teeth are pointing towards. If you uh, install this bandsaw blade the other way, then you're going to have the teeth wear out and have a drastically reduced cutting speed. And if you have the bandsaw blade come in uh, as we've actually received it the other way around, you can swap the direction that the teeth move in by doing this. So now, if we install the blade with the flat edge going on the top lip here, which is like this, the flat edge against this top lip, then if we simulate how we're going to install it, we'll see that the teeth now are uh, biting into the opposite direction, to the left. Now, the bandsaw blade is going to move right, and the teeth are supposed to be biting into the left, so this is the wrong way to install the blade. It's very important to simulate this before you install it, so you don't have to redo it. Now we know that this blade, in this uh, orientation, is not appropriate. We can bend it back into its correct orientation for our particular bandsaw, and then install it. Here's the installation procedure. So you open up these two, but make sure that the power is off. Press this button, just in case. And then install it with the flat and uh, suppo supposed to be touching the top lip here. Uh, you can get started by just 
trying to bend it in that kind of linear shape and then fitting it at the bottom or top at the bottom you'll be like here so now we've got it right here now we've got it right there now we're trying to fit it into the pulley we are trying to fit it into the top pulley we're trying to fit it into the bottom pulley okay now we got both uh, both bottom sides of each pulley then now we can just try to fit it in. Fortunately, because we've been able to move this pulley so far in, this procedure is much easier than if we had some kind of tension. In fact, it might be close to impossible without loosening this. Uh, so, at this point, you've got the bandsaw blade in both pulleys, but you haven't got the bandsaw blade attached at the uh, at the closer guides. So what you do is, again, it's, it's very useful to start this off by moving these pillars inward so that you have more room between these pillars and their respective pulleys. So starting out with this bottom piece, both the guide here and the bearings here, you can install it, and then at the same time, you can be like, Fortunately, the bandsaw blade has a lot of give, so there's a lot of tolerance for air during this process. But of course, you want to minimize how long it takes. Well then, um, so. Did you get it in place? Yeah, we got it in place. Now, we can move these pillars inwards to make room for the hinge to go down. A lip on one side of this on one side of these pulleys. So when you're tightening the tension on this bandsaw blade, you want to hold the blade up against the lip with one hand as you tighten it with the other hand. And of course, there's two pulleys, so you want to do this in, a, in an incremental process so that you can hold it on one side, check on the check it on the other side, and then with both hands, kind of feel it up. Make sure that the bandsaw blade is the bandsaw blade's flat edge is on the lip. And do that. Increase the tension. And then check again. Increase the tension. Okay. And eventually, you'll get it to a decent tension where you do the last check process. And then, you'll be set for the bandsaw blade tension. And then after you've gone through a pretty good tension where if you, say, smack the bandsaw blade at the center, it's not going to give in too much at all, then... Yeah. Okay. You want to do a double check to make sure that all the bandsaw, bl the bandsaw blade is in the guides, both guides, and in both sets of bearings. Make sure that is mounted correctly. You also want to double check that while you are adjusting the bandsaw blade flat edge to be on the lip, the top lip of the pulley, that there's no spaces around. Check the check one pulley, check the other. Good. The bandsaw blade is on the lip of the pulleys. And now, of course, make sure the tension is good. And you can set down this inch plate. You can pull back down this safety and tighten it with the pliers. You can pull back this safety, tighten with the pliers. And then take down this hinge plate. And before you just before you even screw it in, just to give it a test run to see how it all goes and sounds. Acti uh, deactivate the stop button and then make sure that's on the zero. Make sure there's nothing in the vent so it's blade way. Uh, okay. And then we can plug this back in. Power. And so now we've got these hinge plates down. We've got the stop button and it's on zero. We can start it to test it. In the case of any like loud noise, stop it and inspect it for what's happening. Let's see what happens. That's good, that's good. The sound is good, and the direction of the bandsaw blade moving should also be good. As you can see, the teeth 
the direction that they're supposed to bite in is the direction that they're moving in. That's good. And double check the tension. And you, you didn't hear any like big sounds, so the bandsaw blade teeth should not technically be scratching the other the back plate of these two uh, fully fully uh, frames. So we should be good. Gonna double check that. You can always unplug the power, stop this, and raise both pinch plates. But right now things look good. Okay.